Welcome back to another episode of Unrake Podcast. Um, we got on the docket today. Um, Going to touch on uh, the Lions game on Thanksgiving. Uh, obviously, they had a pretty poor turnout, so we'll dive into that and just um, talk around some of the things that we saw around that. And then, obviously, um, you got the, the game that everybody's waiting for. Um, we're finally yes. here. We're about, uh, about what, 17 hours out, give or take. Sound about right. Yeah, for the big game, um, you know, Michigan got Ohio coming to town um, for all the for all the marbles, essentially, uh, with this this matchup. So, yeah, but to kick things off, we'll start off with uh, the Lions and the Packers um, Thanksgiving Day game. Um, Eli, kick it over to you. What was your thoughts on what you saw just with uh, how things kind of transpired with uh, the Lions on Thursday? You know, obviously, just a letdown. <clears throat> it's kind of the best way to put it. Um, we've kind of been sputtering the last couple of weeks. Uh, we needed, yeah. you know a semi heroic showing up from the offense versus the chargers a couple weeks ago. Um, and then we, we wanted to give it away last week as well. And then, so I think just maneuvering within that, I think it all kind of come to a halt this week, short week, just didn't come with our best game plan. Uh, golf look off. The defense looked pretty pedestrian. You know, I mean, Jordan, made Jordan love look like a pro bowl type quarterback. Uh, just, Overall, just a poor performance is my best way to put it. And I'm hoping it's one of the – you got to get those out of your system a little bit. You know, you, get, you can't fire on all Sundays every week. Um, would have – would love to still obviously get one national league televised game. All of America's watching at that point. Um, you would have loved to show up then, and it's a division game. But um, not going to hit the panic button, but definitely just – that just looked bad. They looked almost unenthusiastic to be out there. You know, they're kind of going through the motions. Um Couple of, far as I'm concerned, questionable calls. We went for it on fourth, like inside of our twenty. Uh, just put our defense in some bad spots. Golf has had a turnover bug like crazy the last what two and a half games or so. Uh, so no, I think overall just a, a poor performance, and I'm, I'm hoping they kind of got it out of their system. Uh, you know, heading into you know December here. So for sure, yeah. No, I think I second a lot of things you said there. I mean, I think for me overall, it's just. Offense been kind of sputtering a little bit the last couple of weeks. And they, I mean, they've been putting, I guess I'll say this how I kind of have seen it kind of transpire. Defense has been giving up a lot of yards, but I feel like they've been holding steady given what the offense, the situations the offense has been putting them in. Um, you know, you had Bears pretty much had his dead to rights um, as far as just where the score was at. Um, but all them turnovers, these continue to, you know, yeah. Uh, the defense continued like fight. I think same as yesterday. I mean, hey, I'm looking at the box score right now. It was 20 to six um, in the first quarter, and the final score ended up being 29 22. You know, golf, you know, three fumbles. Um, I mean, that old line, they were getting whooped. And Rashad right. Gary, three sacks. Um, he, you know, he had the best of Taylor Decker pretty much all day. Um, and I'm putting a lot of this on, uh, you know, Ben Johnson. And I'm, all, and I'm saying this too. Um, I, I apparently jumped the gun, giving Campbell a little too much credit because he pulled a little fast one and had that fake punt when we were only down nine. Two plays later, they scored a touchdown. I mean, the score was 29-22 yeah. to, to end things. At that point in time, if I'm not mistaken, it was 23-14. to 14. Um, So hmm. as, as bad as they play, I feel like there are still things that there, we still found ways to get in our own way. Um, you know, whether, so whether it's that fourth down, that fake punt call, um, you know, I think Ben Johnson, I, I mean, that, I just don't think he called the great game, abandoned the run, you know, once yeah. things started to kind of sputter a little bit. And I think he just kind of contributed to the avalanche of just, you know, the offense couldn't stay on the field, you know, and we all know with golf, it don't take much to start getting him off his, you know, off yeah. his game. You know, he um, was, I mean, I saw one time he was, yeah, taken down, he got all twisted up and everything. And I'm just sitting here, it's like mid fourth quarter. I'm like, I'm just sitting here waiting for him to get hurt and basically blow yeah. our whole season. Like that's really what this kind of turned into. It is they just kicked our ass, um, pretty much the same way we did them. We went out of the Green Bay. Um, so they're chopping, looking their chops. You know, we got Jack Harlow out here halftime, everybody feeling good. It's Thanksgiving. You know, first time being eight and two in like 30, 33 years. Um, I think we just got it. You know, got ourselves got it handed. Um, obviously, yeah, got our asses handed to us. Um, just weren't obviously weren't ready to play at all. Yeah, no, you. <clears throat> I'm gonna mention something about golf. You, you said golf. He, we, we praised him on. We, we obviously you go back in the history of this podcast. We were ready to throw him away for nothing um, a couple of years ago, and obviously think think. Luckily, we did not do that. But um, 
this type of the play that he's had the last in the month of November cannot happen. Um, no. we, you know, we we're not a we're that's not a playoff team with him playing that that way. Um, we need him to play at the level he was to make up for some of the other deficits that we have had. Um, and so I, I just want to say that, but also just brought up uh, Gary get get into the quarterback, obviously. We love to see Gary get busy. Hopefully, not too much versus us. Uh, just being, um, right. you know, in our circumstances here. But he golf when he when you start to knock him down, he gets on his ass a lot. Uh, he gets happy feet. Uh, he he like gets. I don't want to. I'm not a quarterback guru, but it, to me, it looks like he gets happy feet. Gets off his mechanics a little bit. The ball mm-hmm. starts fluttering around, hitting the dirt, sailing high. Yeah, just like three four passes. That yeah, who was uh, who he sailed it on? I want to say Laporta maybe over the high over the middle. Just he uh, it twice and he yep, sailed and, on, Amon Ra on a big one, like a third yep. down. Mm-hmm. So he just gets that poor mechanics when you when you start to hit him, get in his face, um, and and it falls apart. He goes from uh, above average to pretty good to to bottom of the barrel quarterback very quickly. Um, yeah. and that's something we hadn't seen of him a lot over the last call it year, and it seemed yeah. to pop up a lot more. And I and that's it's a bit frightening when I mean, it, yeah. when considering <laughs> that. A couple of weeks ago, people were talking about giving him 180 million, 200 million. Um, mm. And then this happens just a few short weeks later. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's tough. And it's, it's poor timing, just kind of even how the schedule's, you know, uh, kind of starting to fall, you know, to where the Vikings you know, play. Yeah. Playing Those last two games. Woo. Yeah. You playing the way you did last week. Um, kind of gave the Bears life. They kind of feel like they can beat you. They just didn't do the right things to do it. Now you got to go see them in Detroit next, or you got to go see them in Chicago next week. You know, I mean, you split it with the Packers, but let's be like, and I don't know, I'll just say this, like it's the NFL and everybody, you know, everybody's showing up to play. Like nobody's going to lay down. It's any given Sunday. Like you said, this is just a letdown, but like, you know, they plan for pride too. And they, they, I think they won three of the last four and he looked way, you know, uh, Jordan Love looked way different, you know, than he did prior. So it's just, you know, it's poor timing. Like you said, you know, it's, it's you know, the next game will be in um, December. You know, you just hope that they can take this little mini bye week, um, you know, correct some things on offense. We really just got to touch on the offense. You know, didn't really touch on the defense. I mean, the pass rush is just glaring, you know, to the point to where Jacobs is getting, I mean, picked on. Um, but – yeah, I mean, he's got to clean that up. You know, he got to take this time um, for the defense. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and be trying to ask for Aaron Glenn's head like every other person was before halftime. I said, I do feel like, you know, we're getting more of like a bend but don't break. We're not as – it's not as stifling as it was, you know, weeks like one through seven. Um, obviously got to fix some things on that side of it, but I feel like the defense is holding their own at least the last couple of weeks given, you know, you get – there's been seven turnovers – that the offense has uh, given up in the last couple of games. So, you know, you want to, you know, throw this one in the trash, you know, take it for what it is and just come out, you know, uh, you know, get ready for Chicago um, this coming week. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And it, I don't, I don't want to obviously touch on this too much, but it's one of those things where we, we talk about how favorable the schedule looked mm-hmm. and it, it was, and it did seem way more favorable, call it two weeks ago. Um, yeah. But now, um, so I can quit and change like that. Yeah, having that many division games left in that back half of that bucket could come back to bite you if you're going to start dropping ones that you have no business dropping. And there's, you know, teams in your division assigning NASA scientists off the practice squad from other teams, and and he's, yes. you know, starting out whatever he is, three and two or whatever, you know. And so it's a lot, a lot, um, a lot can happen when you drop a time. So you got to sure. every week try to swallow up those victories as, you know, as good as you can. And, yeah, uh, you know, the hungry, hungry hippo mentality, as far as just, you know, you got to, you got to grab them, keep going because uh, anything can happen. You know, like you said, it is a couple scary moments where it looked like golf was a little ginger on getting up or maybe it's possible. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the season's over if that happens, you know, I mean, I'm right. not that Teddy Great is completely pedestrian, but it would take a couple of weeks for, for him to get up to speed and, and he, he it's obviously quick. not golf. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, one other thing, too, is just really from, like, a uh, defense standpoint, um, it's kind of crazy how Hutch is being played right now. I mean, they're literally – he's getting chipped by a tight end, and then they're just washing him out with a tackle and a running back because there is no 
nobody else. Pressure from the inside. Ali McNeil, he's throwing his arms up every other play because he's trying to get holding calls. Like you're not Aaron Donald, you're not Chris Jones. You know, you're not yeah. you're not going to get these calls the way that you're trying to get them. So it's just one of those things where, um, like I said, yeah, go into the bye, get things dialed up. But they, I don't know if it's a coaching thing, or what? Because this, I mean, this defense prior to, I mean, what from uh, the run they went on the last year, you know, that first game against the Giants, all the way up until I don't know if he needs to kind of simplify things again. I know that was something that they're big on, you know, to kind of change things last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough watching, you know, Jerry Jacobs get picked on. We know too, you know, we got Gardner Johnson not playing. Um, you know, we never saw, you know, you only saw Emmanuel Moles in for like three plays. So, right. you know, in a tough spot right now, but, um, we've seen this team, you know, be dominant when they had worse injury issues. That's um, what I was just going to say. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I, and I'll say this too, you know, we watched, literally watched the, the, uh, Jets beat the Eagles. We saw the, the Broncos beat the, uh, the Chiefs. You know, we've seen, you know, uh, Minnesota went and got San Fran. So, like, I think that's one thing I just want, you know, wanted to kind of say, too, is, like, I'm not hitting the panic button or anything, but we got to, like, really, this is like a – got to right the ship. We had a, mm-hmm. got lucky, stole one last week that we probably didn't deserve. You know, finally got finally got caught um, the hand in the cookie jar this week. Now it's time to set things back straight. I agree. And this will be the last point. I'll make about this. We, we mentioned when we did make a move at the trade deadline. Yeah. Wow. Now is not the time to be complacent in how everybody else is going to get people. Um, And I'm sitting up watching the 49ers game last night. I'm blanking on a guy's name, the guy they traded for. Uh, Chase Young, yeah. yeah, Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, Chase Young. Yes. Yes. Um, And, I mean, I don't think that's a coincidence that you go and get one of the best, what, top 10 pass rushers in the league, drop them on a D-line of a top five D-line in the league, and it makes a difference. You know, we had a bottom D line and thought ours was good enough. They had one of the better D lines and went in and got it leveled up. So I think right. it's one of those things where rich get richer. Yeah, rich get richer, but also they they sought to get richer. We thought we were doing fine. You know, we were complacent. Yeah. Um, and that's you know that could be a rookie mistake as far as we haven't been in the predicament to as far as preparing for the playoffs type of deal. And maybe they had a year or two before seeing what it could happen like, but uh. Probably underestimate the schedule, or something like I think. Yeah, yeah. They just thought we were good enough, and you would. And we had Chase Young on there; they would not be able to defend Hutch like they do, or block against us like they they have been. Mm-hmm. Um, you would be picking. Okay, you do it to Hutch if you want, and then Chase is getting three sacks a game. You do it to Chase if you want, and then Hutch is getting three sacks a game. So, right. um, I, I think that would just it would have leveled us up to um uh, something special. But it's not. Yes. It's obviously not the end of the road, but uh, it's one of those you begin to question some of those decisions if we drop too many more of these heading forward in San Fran's on the upward swing still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You hope to, you know, James Houston, I think, you know, maybe the next like two, three weeks, he might be back, you know, grass, not tomorrow, but you right. know, hopefully that's something we can, um, you know, can also help on that side of things, but they need to, you know, some of these, into these more juice on that other side. Like it, you know, see the point, People, you know, they're criticizing Hutch, and I'm like, I mean, I don't even know if you're watching what's happening to him. You know, you know, this is like he's the only threat on that D line across the board, at least up to this point. So, so yeah, you know, we'll see what they, uh, you know, they do, and um, you know, obviously as we preview um, them playing the Bears again um, in Chicago um, um, next week. So, yeah, we're gonna turn the page to really the only um, finally here. We talked about yes. before we hop on here. I mean, this is this is the game for all the marbles, for all the Tostitos, whatever you, whatever you call it. I mean, this is the Big Ten Championship. Um, it's here, man. So we, you know, we'll go ahead and just toss it over to you and just kind of kick things off and, um, you know, just see your thoughts, some of the key, key keys to victory, what we need to do to come out with a W tomorrow. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm – obviously, you know, we're, I'm ready for this. I've been, I have been uh, – Damn near since we played them last year, you know. I think mm-hmm. when we joked about not bringing it up as much, but uh, I mean, I think that that um, Ohio hasn't beat Michigan. Clock is up to damn near fifteen hundred days at this point, point. Um, and I think you know you go ahead and win this one, they will be approaching eighteen hundred before we you know come around next year. So this is one of the ones where I think it could be a change because of the tide. Um, <clears throat> it'd be a, a one where we didn't play them during COVID, so that'd be a whole entire class of people that haven't beat Michigan. 
or whole mm-hmm. entire class of people for us that has beat Ohio. Um, I think it it would be just such reassuring uh, for that to happen, reassuring for the team. Um, they've been all the shit and smut that's been put in our name throughout the season, dating back to when I mean the little hamburger thing seems like a it was a joke then, but it seems like a complete joke now compared to what has been accused of recently. Uh, so I mean yes. Harbaugh this total of six games this year. This will be the sixth game he missed. And um, and like you said, just kind of is this for all of it? This is for bragging rights, Big Ten championship uh, bound, uh, playoff bound. Uh, I think it's one of those things where this is this is literally what every player, whether it's Corum, Sander Steele, uh, Roman Wilson, who are, you name them, this is all why they came back. Mm-hmm. Was to put another victory, on, uh, another W against Ohio. Win a Big Ten championship game for the third year in a row and continue to march on to uh, a playoff. Year. I think this is you. You and I. It, just one more thing I'll say, uh, just regarding uh, Blake Corum. I seen that's another player that came back. Could probably could have worked pro, um, but I seen Blake Corum. He said that uh, I think he only had I don't want to lie on it, but like five or seven carries versus Ohio. His uh, his he missed last year. Yeah, he, yep, and he, and he missed, missed last year. And, so he's basically saying, I never really played against the sports. Um, and he was talking about how, how glad he is to be healthy, how glad he is to just have the opportunity to be at home. Last home game for seniors. Uh, birthday. First of all, yeah. So, I mean, it, if he were ever going to pull out a 200, 200 yard, 25 carry game, uh, you got one more in your back pocket. This would be the one to want to go ahead and pull it out for us. Um, yeah. No, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm ready for it. I mean, and I'm not going to, I can let you get into a little more of the details and then we'll go back and forth on it. But I mean, it all comes down to controlling the line of scrimmage and, and, and slowing down Marvin Harris. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, no, I'm right there with you on a lot of that. And I think for me, it's just going to be that line of scrimmage. Um, you know, I think this is, you know, the defense and you know, we had to ride them against Penn state, you know, to be able to, you know, come out of the, you know, come out of there uh, successfully. And I feel like, this is one of them games where they got to be from the jump. You know, I'm going to see, you know, Kenneth Grant, Mason Graham, Chris Jenkins, you know, they got to be um, making it really difficult, you know, yeah. for that uh, that offensive line. You know, the environment's going to be crazy. It's going to be hostile. Um, last time they were here, 2021, with Stroud, they had five false starts. Um, and we got to get um, McCord. You know, I think with him, it's going to be just him and uh, Harrison, it, it, I mean, they've obviously they got that chemistry. So it's going to be one of the things where we got to try to just do it the best we can to just limit that um, connection. And then also just making sure we clamp it up everybody else. Yeah. Um, I think one other big thing too is um, it's just like, you know, on our side, we got Blake Corum, you know, in my opinion, the best running back in this game. You know, this is his first, you know, really getting an uh, opportunity to get like a real, real taste at it. Um they they didn't have Trayvon Henderson um last year you know you know I mean I'll uh, be a hundred he's he's a he's a real deal at running back so that's just another you know guy we gotta you know make sure you get on the ground um do whatever we can to get them as one you know one dimensional whether it's ground you know take you know uh, whether it's taking away the run or the pass you know whatever that looks like um, we just gotta make sure to do whatever we can to get them to play um, with their opposite hand essentially and. Um, yeah, get pressure on them. And I think if we at the defense, I think they're going to be the ones kind of leading the charge, especially with Harbaugh, you know, not being out. I think they're going to have to be, be the ones that have to really set the tone. And, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to see how they show up. No, I agree with you on the defense setting the tone. I think that's how we – you go back to look at the blueprint. Defense have held their own night and day from the last two years, from previous three or four years. Um, so I think just they have to come up um, – Come up strong, and 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 I'm trying to think. I don't. I don't even think we've. I mean, I definitely have gotten turnovers, but I really think the defense has just played good defense for us now the last couple of years. Just they haven't. Couple, hasn't been no, a couple of picks, but yeah, a couple of picks, but nothing like backs. outrageous. Yeah, just right. Just getting them off the field when we need to get them off the field. Uh, making that no time lead. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, I'm thinking of. I can't think of their tight end's name, but uh, it was uh Sanders still on their tight end last year at, in the end zone. Just good plays like that, you know. It's nothing. Yeah. We're not doing anything that that maybe make a highlight reel. It's just good, sound defense, uh, and I and that's what I look forward to as well. That defensive line is better than their offensive line. And um, I watched I watched the house they played probably 
four, three or four games this year. Um, mm-hmm. And I have not been overly impressed. That's not something that mm-hmm. I'm, you know, um, I said a, we were all texting about it. They ended up beating them back a little sound. But Maryland was in that game first half, much more than they were in it versus us. On the road. Um, you know, they, they were um, they were looking good. And then Ohio State obviously came back. Notre Dame seemed to fall off the face of the earth. They weren't that number top five team that they played then. Uh, they settled into just the okay team. Uh, so I, I I look forward to us just going there and being disruptive. That defensive line, mm-hmm. I think we can, like you said, with the crowd noise, uh, the atmosphere, I think we go ahead and get that quarterback off their off his mark, hit him a little bit. Uh, I I think he has a lot, to be, a lot to prove. He hasn't played in an atmosphere like this. He hasn't played against a defense like this. Um, yeah. I think he he might be a little, you know, a little uh, big eyed when it comes when he gets in there. I got to say right now, he's probably sitting around with his stomach a little sore right now, just thinking about what he has to go do t- uh, tomorrow. The atmosphere, um, and then just to try to turn the page. JJ, we need you to show back up. He's yeah. looked a little off the mark the last couple of weeks. Um, I don't know if you're looking ahead forward to this game or whether we've only ran twenty plays. Um, unique plays trying to like hold it all in for this game. But um, I think I heard the announcer say a last game. So the second, who, who do we play before, before Penn state? Uh, uh, Purdue. Purdue. Second half versus Purdue. He had like seven passes. He had eight passes versus oh, Penn state. Um, and then he was obviously not playing the greatest versus Maryland. So they were saying how he hasn't been really on his groove most of the month. Um, mm-hmm. he's made some good plays, had some moments, but whether we're beating the shit out of somebody and we pull him or whether he just doesn't have it, um, uh, like the Maryland game or whether we just say, right, we're going to do the ground and power versus Penn state for whatever reason, he hasn't had the, uh, just the rock in his hand as much as he has the last, uh, you know, first half of the season. So, yeah, you know, I still, think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the big 10 and I'm, I'm just looking forward to, to him coming out and making his name in this one, Blake. Donovan Edwards finally got busy the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm thinking he's, you know, uh, he wants to make his name for himself. I, the boys are, I know they're going to be ready to show up. And you know, I yeah. just love that it's at home. And um, I'm really, I'm mulling over what I think this game is going to look like. I, you know, I mean, I'm th- I think at a Ohio State, uh, Notre Dame game, real slugfest, um, slow scores. Yeah. That Penn State, um, Ohio State game in the mid 20s. Our Penn State game, 20, what, 24, 17 or something like that, or 20, you know, 26, 17, something. Yeah. So real not high flying, not high scoring. So I'm I'm wanting to lean more towards that, but I also think you can kind of you don't know what to expect when it comes to rivalries, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh teams do trick plays, uh just big plays, mo- momentum plays, kick returns, knock on wood for us, whatever you things like that happen in these type of games. They make teams have to play point catch up, or uh, they want to do some things out of the ordinary, uh, and that, that's so. I'm, I'm really on the fence about what this type of game is going to be. But I know I feel confident in our boys, and I know we can go and win whatever type of game there is. You know, if it has to be a 14-10, if you told me the score is fourteen ten, I would sound like that sounds like a game we would have won. If you told me it's 38-30, I I still think we can win. I think we have a very unique team that can go out there and play how you need them to play. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I definitely just want to touch on JJ a little bit just because that, you know, it's been a big talking point to where I think, you know, I don't know, it's kind of funny to where I, I feel like they're, you know, they're saying that we might have been trying, you know, been hiding JJ this entire time. Um, You know, one thing, he's a little banged up. He obviously, you know, he got another week to get a little bit more healthier. Watch his press conference, said he felt a lot better. Um, And I, I agree with you. I do feel like it was, I personally felt like it was just a very vanilla, you know, to the point to where, yeah, I mean, it might have threw him off a little bit just um, in that Maryland game from like from a rhythm standpoint, uh, especially this is the way we took our foot off the gas after going up 23 to three. Um, but, you know, Wilson was also out. Um, they say he should be good to go, be able to play um, tomorrow. Um, you know, we uh, literally had a, a starting left tackle, just left him at home to just rest and heal up. You know, he'll be back tomorrow. Um, Hinton got hurt against Maryland, but, you know, he'll be able to play. So it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be at home. You know, they're going to have, I'm sure they're going to have, you know, a lot of them heavy packages, um, you know, just protecting them, setting them up for success. And I do expect that, you know, play action. Yeah, I think that's where, you know, he'll, like, just like you said, he's doing earlier in the year, that play action, he start, you know, dancing with that line of scrimmage and just, you know, the timely back breaking third and, you know, third and long plays, 
just executing yeah. on those, just keeping them drives alive like he was earlier this season. Well, that's the that's the key to it. I really? don't care whether I mean that's the key. I don't care whether they want JJ to go out there and throw fifty times or whether we plan on running fifty times. JJ is mm-hmm. going to need to hit that third and eleven where we need it. JJ is yeah. going to have to step back and 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 you know maybe put the wheels on on you know a third and six and just hit you know they they said that this is a game where you need all that to come out come out of the bag. No, you know there's no more holding back. Uh, you got to swing for the fences on all of this. Yeah. And, um, no, so I think that was a great point. You brought up the heavy package. I think that's exactly what we're going to try to do. I ground think we're going to ground and pound, establish the run. I think a couple of things we and they need to prove it. But we we're saying, hey, you all bunch of pretty boys. We we found a we found a recipe to beat y'all. It's pound mm-hmm. the rock for two hundred yards, and then you guys panic. <laughs> it's you know it's uh, just relentless pressure, um, and. And it, especially with them, they get a few, they get off the mark a little bit, three and out, they, you know, 10 nothing or something. They're the type of team that just will abandon the run, just start passing. They're the type of team that will, you know, they're uh, they're not used to being in that predicament. So you you, you go and jump out on them on top of it. Uh, that's ex- exactly where we need it to be. Because then our defensive line can start teeing off. They're going to start forcing the ball to Marvin Harrison. Yeah. Get a tough or two. That's the kind of recipe. But it all starts with that line of scrimmage. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of ashamed. I didn't realize we were down uh, left tackle last week. I knew we were – it looked bad. It was getting – at times, it was getting blown up. Yeah. But, um, and even Roman Wilson, he got banged up, um, and they pulled him. You know, they pulled him in a heartbeat. He was over there in a the T-shirt next series. Yeah. Um, so I think we, we're definitely preparing for this week. Um, and, and we have been since last year. So, I, I, I mean, this is, this is what you live for a Michigan fan to be. You know, I'm, it's been talk of the town – uh, around here with my dad, my brothers, um, you know, everybody, every, you know, uh, even state fans kind of want to talk to me about it. So it was the talk of the town. Um, and <laughs> it, it's one of the things where they love to hate, you know, they love to hate, but uh, I, I feel good about it. And even in, I think people know the type of team we have. And yeah. I, I believe in the type of team we have, and it's, it, they just need to show up. We are, we are the better team. It's, it's a matter of making sure that we, we're making the right calls from Sharon Moore, um, you know, just not doing too much, not doing too little, you know. Right. Um, and he, we also don't want him to try to be hardball. But uh, it's one of those things where you just got to – you got to – biggest moment of his life, you know. He fuck around and win this. I mean, I, I mean, I think you can pretty much guarantee him a, a head coaching job next year somewhere. Um, sure. he, he's showing that he – I mean, that would be two top ten wins in your belt in the first three head starts. <laughs> so, um yeah. Um, so I, I think he has a he has a lot on him. JJ has a lot on them. The whole team does. Um and I think I don't know who it was said this week, if you lose, you know, it's all for nothing. The season was for nothing. Yeah. I think I like I it's it's sad to say, but it's the truth. That's what it is. I will be twice as mad driving back to my house from my parents' house on Saturday if we lose than if we win. Yeah. Um it it will put damper on my week, put damper on his football season. Um, and I and if it does that for me, a civilian who ain't never uh, suited up in the maize and blue, I know for them boys on the field it'd be 150 times as bad. So, um, but I, I really, truly, I feel good about this. I feel like we we are the better team and and fuck Ryan Day. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's the that's gonna be one thing I was gonna touch on is it's like the just the pressure standpoint. You know, obviously, like you know, they want his head just off of two games, you know, the last yep. couple of years. Um, I don't know about you. I've been hearing just Texas A&M rumors. Um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, things, obviously, with all, everything that's been, you know, just transpiring this season. I do I'm, – I'm right there with you. I do just feel like, I mean, we got the, the senior leadership. You know, if you, you want to – I think the position battle, I mean, I think we win, you know, everything except for receiver, you know, just from, uh, you know, all levels, just all the matchups throughout the game. Um I do feel like it's going to be one of those things where, like I said earlier, I just I'm, I feel great if the defense can kind of come out, just make him uncomfortable early, you know, get McCord off his spot, and that offense we can just encrypt and control that clock, you know, put together some solid drives, um, and just <clears throat> and, it, and it will come down to it, just lean on our defense, you know, kick the ball back to them, and make them, you know, come down the field to win that position battle. And I think I think we're built, you know, for you know uh, games like this. It's gonna be a nice chill, 30, 30 something degrees. I think that's perfect, perfect run the ball weather. Um, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a real, 
Ruben match right there with you. I feel I'm feeling really good about it too. So yeah. So let me ask you this a little strategic. How do we play Will Johnson? Question A or how do how sorry how do we Marvin Harrison? Answer? How do we play Marvin Harrison? Uh, yeah. And uh, how would you play? Like how do you think we're gonna do it? And how would you do? It? Yeah. I uh, just have a follow man. He pretty much took him away um, last year. Um, if yeah. I'm not, not mistaken, um, he got loose for a touchdown, you know, I think uh, to make it like 20 to 17 or something like that um, before the half, but they put him over there and it, I'm, I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure he neutralized him for the most part the rest of the game. And I think that's what it's going to come down to. We just going to have guys, you know, Josh Wallace, Sarah still, um, you know, uh, Morion Walker, um, Sam, Rob Moore, um, Macari Page. It's like, yeah. So you would in that third of the field. And I think everybody else got to make sure all these other all those other weapons are just kept at bay. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I kind of agree with you on that. I um I like the Will Harris, Will Johnson's final round, um, uh, you know, kind of being his mirror, his shadow with mm-hmm. a safety over the top. Um, I think um I don't remember exactly what we held him to last year, but I feel very confident that if we do the same thing again, he probably will roll away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, I don't, it wasn't nothing crazy. You know, he, uh, yeah. and I, I think he's going to have to have, an, uh, you know, a game for the ages for to pull it off. You know, I don't think he's going to get it done with five for 80 and a touchdown or something. I think we're, he's going to have to, you know, I mean, it's a Johnson type numbers to get, to get it done versus. It took like it took like one fifty and two touchdowns against Penn State. So like, yeah, it's, right. it's gonna be astronomical. Just given you know the talent at quarterback, just calling it you know calling it what it is. Um, and I'm just curious. I just pulled up the box score real quick, but I do feel like uh, for I think the neutralizer year, for the most part pretty good. I mean, he was seven for one twenty in the touchdown. Yeah, that which is which is going off. But for him, you can live with that. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and I think, like I said, that a lot of that, a lot of that was you know forty two yard uh, touchdown. So you know we can just kind of keep him at bay. Um, a lot of these other, I mean, even uh, Mecca Buka had more. He had one hundred and twenty five. So, and you even saw even when they played uh twenty twenty one. I mean, I think every one of the receivers had over a hundred. Yeah, <laughs> you just like they were just people. empty calories. They were just empty calories. They weren't yeah. doing nothing. In yeah. agree, and that's another thing. You down in the end zone, you start cracking. Crack it down that field shortens, um, get them field goals out of there. That's the key to success. They want to put them points up. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. But hey, man, it's for, like you said, for all the marbles, and it's, I mean, we, like you said, we up to what, 16 hours before kickoff, mm-hmm. 30 degrees. Uh, you know, maybe the, maybe the heavens will open up for us again, let some, some snow sh- showers in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, bro, it's, uh, this is what we do it for, man. This is this is what it's all about. Me and I mean, what's it two three? Uh, biggest game of the year. Yep. I mean, I know we I, we kind of debated it. I mean, I, you're probably right about it, but I, I think whoever wins this has a very strong, arguable chance to go to number one. Yeah. Uh, and and kind of play those seeds of where you know trying to you know you know I don't know I just I just, I just like it, and I also could imagine. I mean, obviously we got to can't get too much ahead of ourselves, but. I love to see how wh- whoever the loser of this is, if they're still going to try to hang up, hang them around in the playoff, or they're going to kick them yeah. out and step in. And um, but I don't even want to be in that conversation. I, just, I know if we win this and take care of business, we're playoff bound. So hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, core prediction. Um, I will kick it off. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the. I think it's gonna be a nice physical slug fest. I think we're gonna end up just halftime. Just kind of started after halftime, starting to slowly pull away. Um, I'm gonna say. Uh, Score will be a 30-20, Michigan. I like that. 30-20. Um, we were in the same ballpark. 28-17, 28-20, somewhere in there. Um I, I think we'll I think we'll get that quarterback could give us the ball a couple of times with a tur- uh, fumble um interception or whatnot. I think we'll get the ball a couple of times. And uh, I think mm-hmm. after that we'll just play the ground and pound game. Uh, keep our running backs. Running backs are fresh. I mean, them, them bad boys probably don't got a 300 no. kids between two of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I know, I know the clip now. <laughs> yeah, no, they, yeah. <laughs> didn't put the, Grants didn't put the switch on. Grants didn't put the switch on. <laughs> yeah. For real, put that kick return, do whatever we need to do to, hey, it is that time. Hey, if, I, if they, 
if I see Diamond Edwards roll off or kick a pump return, I'm going to ape shit. <laughs> yeah, hey man, eyes are bumpy. <laughs> Desmond Howard incoming. The Charles, yeah, that, that type of that type of play might be made tomorrow. But yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good one. I'm looking forward to it. Um, be back with y'all uh, next week to um yeah touch on uh the recap. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For the people. No, I'm good, man. I'm ready. I'm just looking forward to this game. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back at you next week. Hopefully a couple uh, shorts of some interceptions to people getting a, uh, some laid wood, some wood laid on them. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. Next time. Peace.